Hey, what's up guys? Mikey here. You ever feel like when you're growing up, your popularity peaks when you turn 10 years old? Prior years feel like growing pains, and every year after 10 years old never really reaches that same height of popularity? Yeah, those were the days. 2009, the year of Spongebob's 10th anniversary and, in my opinion, the time when Spongebob's popularity was at an all-time high. When the show started off in 1999 with season 1, the series did well but it didn't immediately become the super popular icon or cash cow that it is today. In terms of popularity, it felt like a regular cartoon that people did like but wasn't talked about to death. In 2004, the Spongebob Squarepants movie released in theaters and the show had just had three successful seasons. The movie was meant to end the entire series, but the network wanted to keep it going because the movie did well and there were a shit ton of merchandise sales. Since the creator Steven Hillenburg wanted to end the show after this point, he stepped down from his position as showrunner and Paul Tibbet, a writer and storyboard director, took his place on that position. Hillenburg was still credited as executive producer at this time during the end credits. When he returned for the Spongebob movie Sponge Out of Water, he was credited as executive producer and was also credited as such during the opening credits of every episode, starting with episode 361, Lost in Bikini Bottom. When season 4 started in 2005, the series started to take a notable decline in quality, but that was obviously because the series was starting to go on for longer than it was intended to. The drop in quality was noticeable, and some people stopped watching, but it wasn't a super massive drop, it was more of a gradual decline as time went on. Even as a kid I noticed a decline, but ironically, I also started to watch the show much more at some point in 2007, the year season 5 premiered. In 2008 when season 6 came out, I started to realize that the show was really starting to become popular at this point. <laughs> Obviously. Otherwise, it wouldn't have lasted for at least six seasons. Even though season six is considered the show's worst season, the popularity really started to set in for me personally around this time. At this point, I also didn't know Spongebob started in 1999, but this would all change the following year. In June 2009, a few more episodes of season six premiered over the course of one week, and I saw this advertisement that was presented on a grand scale. This Spongebob event was called the Ultimate Spongebob Sponge Bash and it would lead up to 10 brand new Spongebob episodes in a row. It was treated as this massive celebration of Spongebob and at first I had no idea it was going to be a huge non-stop marathon. While the commercial did say a 3 day Spongebob event, I did not think they meant this literally but soon I realized that it was. Later that same month I learned that this would be a 50 hour non-stop marathon. It would start on July 17, 2009 at 8 p.m. and end on July 19, 2009 at 10 p.m. While this wasn't exactly three days, more just two days and two hours, this was still the longest Spongebob marathon yet. I was amazed when I heard this. I didn't even think this kind of thing would have been possible considering how Nickelodeon has that Nick at Night brand that happens after 8 p.m. on weeknights, so that's what made this so surprising to me. They advertised the hell out of this marathon for the next month and a half. The only tidbit of information that was missing for me personally was the occasion. More on that in a bit. As time went on, more information about the marathon came out, such as fans picking their top 10 favorite episodes, 10 celebrity favorites, and of course, the 10 new episodes at the end. I went online to vote for my 10 favorite episodes. When I saw how many there were, that was when I truly realized how many episodes had actually premiered. Shortly after, I went on Wikipedia to get a look at a proper list, and when I went on there, that was when I truly realized the show had premiered back in 1999. And that was when it hit me that this whole event was to celebrate the show's 10th anniversary. I was blown away at this realization, and that was when my current love for the show stems from. Specifically, where I often look at Wikipedia to find out when new episodes will be premiering on TV, and then tuning into those episodes when they come out. As time went on, I was so excited for this event. At the time, I was also fascinated with the Burger King Spongebob toys, and wanted some kind of toys to commemorate this event. After they had toys to tie in with episode 217, Spongebob Squarepants vs the big one, I was expecting them to have toys for this event too, but they never had them. It was definitely disappointing. When it was closer to the event, I wanted to try to watch as much of the marathon that I could, possibly the whole thing, 
But this ended up not working out because my family was going to Ohio that weekend to visit my grandparents. Despite that, I still watched everything that truly mattered, which I will get into a little later. That marathon holds a special place in my heart. I was hooked on it and I wanted to try to preserve this marathon as much as possible, so I attempted to try to record the entire marathon on VHS. Even before I knew I was going to visit my grandparents in Ohio, I bought blank VHS tapes so I could record the marathon. And this worked for a while. For a year or two after the sponge bash ended, I had these tapes and had them playing in the background while I was playing games on my Nintendo DSi. After a while, they ended up getting lost, and I no longer have them now. I have no idea what happened to them, but having most of the marathon on VHS was amazing. Even though I don't have it on VHS and can't see those special bumpers anymore, I still remember watching the Sponge Bash like it was yesterday. I was there, ready and waiting to watch it on July 17, 2009. When it came on, there was a bit of a monologue with a narrator talking about the impact Spongebob left on the world before transitioning to Patchy the Pirate as a DJ explaining what was in store that weekend and hosting the bash with Potty the Parrot. The marathon officially kicked off with the world premiere of episode 227, To Square Pants or Not To Square Pants. After that episode, they aired episode 1, Help Wanted, since that was where it all started. After that, they had aired the most recent episodes at the time, specifically the 5 episodes that had recently aired. After that, just a bunch of random episodes all night on Friday night and into Saturday morning. On Saturday morning, they would showcase the top 10 fan favorite episodes that fans voted for online. Right before that, at 10am, they premiered a new episode, episode 242, Chum Caverns. After that, they revealed the top 10 favorite episodes voted by fans. Number 10 was episode 31, Suds. Number 9 was episode 51, Patty Hype. Number 8 was episode 32, Valentine's Day. Number 7 was episode 33, The Paper. Number 6 was episode 1, Help Wanted. Number 5 was episode 28, SB129. Number 4 was episode 112, The Camping Episode. Number 3 was episode 5, Rick Pants. Number 2 was episode 21, FUN. And number 1 was episode 10, Pizza Delivery. Of those episodes, only one of them was from season 2, one was from season 3, and the other 8 were from season 1. After the top 10, there were just a bunch of random episodes for the rest of the day, and later that night at 8pm, the Spongebob Squarepants movie came on TV. It wasn't the first time the movie came out on cable television, but it was still neat to see during this occasion. The marathon continued all throughout Saturday night and into Sunday morning. On Sunday morning, the next point of interest was 10 celebrity favorites, where 10 certain stars shared what their favorite episodes of Spongebob were. Most of these celebrities were just some of the current Nickelodeon stars at the time, like Nathan Kress and Jerry Trainer from iCarly. Right before that, there was a special advanced screening of one of the 10 new Spongebob episodes that would premiere later that night. This episode was episode 245, I Heart Dancing. After that, the 10 celebrity favorites shared their favorite episodes. When those were done, more episodes aired over the rest of the day, and later that night at 7pm, the moment everybody was waiting for finally happened. The 10 brand new episodes in a row. Of these 10 new episodes, there was one season 5 episode, 3 season 6 episodes, and 6 season 7 episodes. The order these new episodes aired was as follows. Episode 179, Goo Goo Gas from season 5. Episode 234, No Half for Pat from season 6. Episode 238, Chump Bucket Supreme from season 6. Episode 248, Someone's in the Kitchen with Sandy from Season 7, and then I Heart Dancing, which was already shown that morning before the 10 Celebrity Favorites. After that, there was Episode 246, Gross Spout from Season 7, Episode 244, Tentacle Vision from Season 7, Episode 249, The Inside Job from Season 7, Episode 247, Stuck in the Ringer from Season 7, and last but not least, Episode 233, Overbooked from Season 6. After that, they just aired Chum Caverns and To Square Pants or Not To Square Pants again, and after that, the marathon officially ended. However, after that, there was another event called The After Bash, which was basically just the 10 new episodes airing over the course of the following week, and that was it. And that was basically the ultimate Spongebob Sponge Bash. 
I look back on the marathon very fondly, and even though I didn't see as much of it as I wanted, I did see everything that mattered, such as all 12 new episodes, the top 10 fan favorite episodes, the 10 celebrity favorites, and the Spongebob Squarepants movie when they all came on. I still wish I had the VHS tapes I used to record on them, and while I'll always be sad that they're gone forever, I will also always cherish the memories of when I did have them. Looking back on it, it really feels like Spongebob's popularity was at an all-time high at this point. After this, it felt like there was never a time where the popularity matched the levels that it was at during the Sponge Bash. There were some times where it came close of course, like when the Spongebob movie Sponge Out of Water came out in theaters on February 6, 2015, and The Best Year Ever, which was basically how Nickelodeon was marketing any episodes that premiered on TV in 2019, which was the year of the 20th anniversary, and of course, the big 20th anniversary episode, episode 486, Spongebob's Big Birthday Blowout. While Spongebob had taken a drop in quality at this point, I feel like that didn't truly set in until the following year in 2010 when some of the show's worst episodes came out, like episode 253, A Pal for Gary, or episode 263, One Course Meal. Despite that, 2009 was a great time to be a Spongebob fan since they really went all out for the 10th anniversary. However, there was an even bigger Spongebob marathon after this. In 2019, there was a marathon called Every Spongebob Ever, which aired on Nicktoons in the summer of 2019. It went even longer than the Sponge Bash, but didn't air every episode that came out at the time. While it made sense that they aired it on Nicktoons, nobody knew it even existed, myself included. Yeah, I can't believe it either. It also makes sense to have these marathons in the summer, and not in May, during Spongebob's actual anniversary, because more kids would be home and would have more time to watch it. The only thing I found odd about the Sponge Bash was how the top 10 favorite episodes voted for by fans only resulted in one episode from seasons 2 and 3. I know fans voted, but seriously, episodes like episode 46, Big Pink Loser, 70, Band Geeks, and 102, Chocolate with Nuts, didn't make the top 10? I always found that strange, even to this day. But that's really it. The marathon was a great moment in Spongebob history, and it's probably cherished by Spongebob fans everywhere. While that was such a big moment for the show, I just can't see anything like that ever happening again no matter how long the main series goes on for. Despite that, I'd still argue the franchise was in a better place back then, before everything happened that got to where we are today. But I guess all that we can do now is blame Nickelodeon.